Hey everyone, it is Thursday and no better way to start the balance of the, the rest of the week by doing a jet flight from Denver Centennial. I'm with my buddy Joel and yes. uh, he's uh, helping me get current in the Vision Jet again. It's been a few months since I last flew it. So Joel's been flying this thing like a like a, like a a wild animal out here <laughs> and he's gonna do a great job helping, uh, helping me get current again. And uh, we're sitting at the Denver Jet Center and we're gonna do an really awesome flight uh, we're going to scottsdale today yeah so cool so we're gonna that's uh that's gonna be really fun we're gonna fly over the mountains we've got a brand new g2 plus that we're gonna be flying uh, in your favorite paint scheme which is i don't know if we're allowed to announce it yet but let's let's use your term for it which is completely murdered out so yes this is a murdered out uh, a murdered out vision murdered jet. out vision jet yeah love it uh, but anyway so we're sitting here at the denver jet center we just uh had our last pit stop now it's time for us to do a quick file over there so i want to walk you through that um and then we'll go out to the plane and get rolling so let's file first all right, Joel's gonna do a great job helping us walk through filing. And I'm just using Four Flight Mobile on my phone here. Yeah. And um, why don't, since I'm filming, why don't you go okay. ahead and push the buttons here for us? Sure, so what I, I usually start with, and every, I mean, there's probably several different ways to do this, but I always start in the flight plan with my um, airport I'm flying out from, and then I will put my destination in there too, basically two waypoints. And then in just a second, it's going to populate all the recommended routes and I will click the recommended routes and I I use this almost every time nine times out of ten unless unless it just makes sense to file direct but a lot of times there's logic built into this where um, you know these are routes that controllers have given the past several flights and in fact there's a, a way to see you know in the past month how many times this route was given so since we have Flightstream 510 on board, um, it's super easy to go ahead and choose the recommended route. So in this case, it's the Wings 1 departure with a Desert 2 arrival. I'm just going to go ahead and click that, select the route. We'll update it to flight level 300 since we're going west. Now it's already in there. I'm going to go ahead and hit File, hit Flights. Um, I don't think we'll need an alternate, but let's look and see what the TAFs are showing in that area. This is great because, uh, look at that, we've got Phoenix. It's, let's just file yeah. Phoenix for an alternate just for yeah. the heck of it. Probably don't need it today. But. No, it's all, the TAFs are showing great for the next 24 hours, so, but never hurts to have an alternate in there. So we'll choose that, tail number is correct. It already has our performance profiles calculated. So I've noticed that um, on typically on these flights, when it calculates your your estimated time in route, it's really accurate. It's, it's like within minutes of each other um, in terms of what you get in real time. So there's, there's our route. All that looks good. Let's just go back up there real quick. Okay. Or, or, uh, no, we can do it here. So it's 600 miles. It's five, uh, one hour and 54 minutes there. So we'll readjust our time. We have to be there by noon, so right on schedule. We have 143 gallons of fuel and a three knot headwind. So mm -hmm. um, when we got onto the airplane today, we had, it was about 90 gallons of fuel, right? Mm -hmm. And then we added 75 gallons aside, so another 150 gallons. Yep. So um, I'm horrible at doing video math, um, <laughs> but we should have more than enough here. Yeah, so uh, we, we will have, I mean, we basically put on board what we're going to burn in route. So we're going to land with 90 gallons, yep, which good. is a nice, comfortable reserve. You're a lot smarter than I am of math, so that's really good. <laughs> All right, so that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Let's just sit so that the flight plan sinks. We'll just put two people on board there. Yeah. Well, I think I have to do it from the next page. Oh, okay, good. Okay. But let's t walk through the fuel load here real quick, okay. just in case. So here's the minimum, or the minimum fuel required, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, minimum fuel required. So, uh, you know, we have, today we have more than IFR reserves, MBAA reserves, whatever you'd want to call it. We've got, we've got plenty of fuel on board. Um, so yeah, we would need 219 gallons of fuel 
to legally do this. And with taxing and our uh, flight fuel, uh, fuel to the destination is gonna burn about 137 gallons. So we'll have 76 at landing and our reserve fuel is 52 gallons. So mm -hmm. that's what we would need. But we have, uh, it was 90 plus 150. So that's two, 240. 240, 240 gallons. So we're gonna do manual fuel and that really populates what we have. So we have really ultimately an extra 20 gallons of fuel to play around with. Yeah. So, you know, we'll be landing with a, a uh, you know, we'll have, we'll, we're tankering an extra 20 gallons if we run into any problems. Yeah. Cool. That's great. All right. What's really nice is it, it already knows based on the profiles it's loaded in all the ramp weights, zero fuel weights, maximum takeoff weights. So, Based on this information, you know, we've kind of got a, already a glance at our, our um, that we've not exceeded any sort of weight. Awesome. Weight limitations. Great. And then from here, uh, we've got, we're able to put our FBO, we're parking at Ross Aviation today, yeah. right? Yeah. So we'll select Ross. Fantastic. And then um, I like this. I've used this a lot. I, when we shut down, I log the times just here because it's so important to know you're you're doing some heavier fuel calculations in the vision jet than you are in a piston or an mm -hmm. SR. So it's really nice to know. Like you're always wondering how much fuel's on board because there's fueling limitations and not necessarily limitations, but making sure that there's balancing and you know you're going to be needing to know that. So I log this every time I fly the vision jet. Yeah. Good. Cool. Are we ready to file? Yeah. All right. So we'll hit proceed to file um, and we'll verify all our information here. True airspeed, all that looks correct. Um, we're going to put two people on board here. The route looks correct. Time and route looks correct. Fuel on board looks correct. Um, yeah, so far everything everything looks awesome good all right so then we'll just hit file and actually i'm going to update the departure time just by give, just to give us a few extra minutes here file and file so there's a a very good chance that when we call up clearance they're going to say cleared as filed to scottsdale because we chose the recommended route um other people's experience might be different, but at least nine times out of ten, that's what happens to me. If I choose a recommended route, they, they say cleared as filed. All I have to do when I get in the airplane is hit this little button right here with the flight stream 510. There's going to be in this little black space here, there's going to be a, um, uh, a little button that says panel where I can Bluetooth the route to the panel and it's already loaded in our flight plan. All we have to do is activate it. Fantastic. So we're ready to roll here. So if all goes well here, so we're gonna be departing, you know, let's say let's say that's actually maybe 840, 850. So we're gonna be landing right about 10, almost 11 o'clock. So fantastic. It's time to go out these doors right here, pay for our fuel, and then the ramp, the airplane's parked out there. Uh, oh, by the way, if you're ever in the Denver area, come to the Denver Jet Center. It's one of Joel's favorites and mine. Mm -hmm. The perfect landing restaurant up here. It's unbelievably good. Uh, you can come up, go up the stairs, and uh, hang out up there. And uh, there's a lot of seats. The food is phenomenal. Uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So check it out. Perfect landing at the Denver Jet Center in Denver Centennial. All right, we're getting buckled in. We're sitting in the cockpit of the G2 Plus here. And uh, I've got these, uh, well, these things are extremely handy. These are the flight data told cards, takeoff and landing data. And um, since it's my first time back in the plane, I'm gonna use this and uh, just walk through like filling it out and, um, and how to, you know, what this does. So it really gets my mindset in the right way. So we're all filed here. And uh, Joel, you're in the right seat. I'm excited yeah. to get a lesson. Hey, this is great. I, I never thought I'd be instructing Al Waterloo, but I'm honored. No, well, so. I'm honored that you're here. You're, you're the, uh, I feel sorry for you uh, <laughs> because uh, this is it's gonna be rough. But anyway, this would be good. And uh, let's see this. I'll show you one thing about the G2 Plus that I've noticed right off the bat. 
All right, so we're ready to start firing up. I've got toll card fi uh, filled out as best as I can for right now. But what I'm gonna do is start getting everything going. So I'm gonna do battery two and battery one on and just let everything sort of fire up at the moment, which is gonna be good. You can start to see things getting rolling, just getting set up. And uh, I'm gonna stay clear of the controls just to make sure that there's any uh, power on tests that are going through. So making sure that, that feels good and uh, let it all go through. So what I can start doing right away is following the checklist. There's a little wheel down here that I can scroll, roll this back and forth and I can push down on it like a button. So what that does is it allows me to either scroll, if I scroll, I can move through the checklist or if I push down, I can complete that. So our pre-flight is complete. Our doors will come over here Make sure that everything is closed and locked, which it is. I've got the parking brake on, which is an old SR habit that I have. Parking brake is required. Battery one is on, battery two is on. Generator, I've heard mixed things about the generators. Do you leave them on? Yeah. When you start? Yeah. Okay, good, so those are gonna go on. Uh, external GPU is uh, not connected. And our FADEC channel coming over here, we have channel B, which is fantastic. So we're in a good start stop, uh, spot to uh, start rolling here. All right, I'm gonna go right into the start checklist. Our strobe lights, those are on. Cast messages, these are normal for us right now until we get everything initialized. Our thrust lever coming down here, making sure that that's all the way down to the idle. Uh, our brakes, those are held, and we're gonna come through. I'm just gonna run through this and I'm gonna go flow through it. So I'm gonna read it first. So the engine knob over here is gonna to go to run. Then we're gonna to listen to a fuel pump and we're gonna see an, in, an indication that it's on and we're gonna to listen to it. Then we're gonna make sure that there's no start warning and then we'll hit the button and start, start up the engine. That's where we're gonna go and monitor all of our engine gauges and uh, make sure everything's set. And the FADEC will basically command all that. So. Here we go, strobe lights, those are co coming on. I could come over to our engine, start, run. So you're gonna hear that. I see the pump and I hear it in my ear. No, no bolts and we can press it. Now, coming over here, monitoring, making sure everything looks good. Temperature's going good. Looking like a really good start so far. Fantastic. Nice and cool. Okay. Well, temperature. This is all looking nice. That came off. We got a good, nice start. So fantastic. Go ahead and go through the rest of this. Our engine instruments are good. Engine ice protection system. We don't need it right now. ECS control panel right down here. Going to turn on our environmentals. Turn that on. External GPU at the moment is uh, uh, not connected. Our oxygen master is coming on. We'll initialize our eight, uh, avionics. I'm going to turn our bleed on while we're over here and uh, start doing this. So. So we're going to do our avionics initialization, and we come down here to our center panel uh, touchscreen and make sure that our databases, those are all uh, in date, which they are. I'm going to hit next. Our safety information, there's a handful of different pages that we're going to verify, so I'm going to acknowledge that. This airplane's equipped with caps. We're aware of that. Our passenger briefing, Joel and I talked about a briefing beforehand, but uh, same as if you're coming from an SR, same same idea here and uh, then I'm gonna hit next so I've got to do a uh, stall and fire test so what we're gonna do is hit this button and we're gonna see fire fires lit up here these bottles are uh, illuminated we're hearing fire through our enunciator and we have warnings there's our stall horn and making sure that that system is active and working that's fantastic. So that's that just completed. So we got two good tests. Our next thing, we're going to sink our fuel. We're going to initialize it. So we have 240 gallons of fuel right here. And the way that I'm going to do that do that is tell the computer to sink how much fuel that we have. So that's right. I'm going to hit next. 
our weight and balance is uh, looking good here. So uh, I am uh, 230. Joel? 170. Amazing. Bring the average down for us, which I like. And uh, so we're all set here. That looks great. But well within balance. So I want to show you one cool thing. So based on the weight we just plugged in, yeah, there's our total aircraft weight of 5736. So we're we're you know 270 pounds under gross, which is nice. Um, it already knows density, altitude, and our temperatures and everything. So based on that data, it's going to calculate our ground roll, our ground roll for a 50 foot obstacle, and what our climb gradient is. So it's basically just ran our performance charts for us. That's fantastic. So this is I remember departing out of Denver Centennial, and this number was a lot. Uh, higher. Granted, it's a little cooler out here in the fall uh, today, uh, which is nice. So we're about 30, 40 degrees cooler than I last time I flew out of here. But we're in a G2 plus, so I'm starting to even see this. That number really like influentially come down out of Denver Centennial here. So the shortest runway they have here, I believe, is 7,000 feet, or which is the 17 right. Um, and I think we might even be able to do 28 if that was available today. Yeah. Um, but I would have to double check on that runway line. But um, awesome. That's cool. Thank you for showing that. What we're going to do is do our flight plan. Um, I did not sync up my uh, four flight yet. That's okay. So if you want to put just a placeholder, just put SDL in there, and yep. then we'll come back to that part once you uh, got sync up your phone. SDL in there. And what that did was programmed our pressurization computer and schedule. So that was fantastic. That's all done. A lot of people ask questions around, hey, how, what's it like to fly pressurization? It's as simple as that. You enter your destination, and the computer does the rest. So 1,500. So all right there, um, the computer's programmed how to pressurize and depressurize the airplane and maintain that for us. And look, at it, it already knows our, what our cabin altitude is right now since we're <laughs> yes. in yep. the Mile High City. Mile High. To prove it, I like it. So that's next. And our runway. I don't know the runway. I think um, they're using the three fives. If I just look out the window today, which will probably be off a three five right, which is uh, this longer runway here. So we're gonna taxi down. So what I'm gonna do is put three five right in there. It's a ten thousand foot runway, and then I'm gonna look back up. What Joel just pointed out is that forty sixty five. That's our required takeoff distance. So we need four thousand sixty five feet. And that is fantastic. What I'm going to do down here is start filling that out in our takeoff briefings. So we're going to depart off a of 3-5 right. This is really, really important. Our ground required distance is uh, 40 65 based on our weight. And what we have available here off of 3-5 right is it's a 10,000-foot runway. 10,000 feet. So we got plenty of room here. So that's fantastic. I like that. I really, really lean into this and make sure it's sort of my double check on everything, which is great. So I'm going to initialize that, and I'm going to accept everything. We have got all green check marks. Our avionics are initialized, and that's good. Yeah, I want to point out one cool thing here. Let's make this full screen. So because we told the uh, perspective touch plus that we're going to take off on 3-5 right, you'll notice that 3-5 right is, is highlighted with chevrons going in the right direction. So if we were to inadvertently taxi onto the wrong runway or choose a runway that was not 4,065 feet, it would we would hear an aural warning. So it would say, check runway. And if the runway was too short, it would say, runway too short. So there's logic built into that. This is one last little self-check that we've selected a runway, we've put in the required takeoff distance, and we're not going to uh, make a rookie mistake today. So. Fantastic. That's good. I'm glad to know that. All right. So the other thing that we're going to do, we're going to finish up the checklist. The avionics, they've been initialized. Our caps pin is down here. We have it uh, removed and uh, stowed. Our passengers, uh, you and I, have been briefed. Our seat belts are secured. And our bleed switch is on. That's our fresh air switch. Uh, bleed is uh, selected to the bleed. So we're going to go to our next tech checklist here. This is our before taxi, so this is where we're going to go ahead and get all of our clearance and uh, everything. But before I do that, what I want to do is pull up our 
uh, pull up our uh, Bluetooth and everything. So you just went in and grabbed that. When I'm going to come down here, I can see in my Bluetooth settings 264, Yan 246 Yankee. It's going to be set, so it's going to take a second to pair to it, which is going to be fantastic. That matches with that, so I'm going to say yes and pair. And now we've got, we're connected, which yep. is great. So if you go back to your four flight, you should get a message here in just a second that says, would you like a route? And just so, so hit load route for now. Hit load route. Now go back to your flight plan and and go go down to your, uh, your route there. Okay, so, all right. So our route is still in there, the one we filed. Now go ahead and hit the, the export button there at the top. Now the panel button appears, so go ahead and push that. We should see a little flash here in just a second. Three, five, right, this is gonna be our departure runway here. That's good. There it is, so hit connect. There we and go. Hit that, and then it'll ask you to activate standby, so activate standby. Okay. So now the whole route's in there. Fantastic. So we've got that all set up for our, our flight plan is programmed, um, which we're going to do uh, use here. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and get our radio set up. So here we are. We're going to do our Waypoint Info Airport. We're going to choose KAPA where we're sitting and go into our frequencies and just sort of rapid fire program these. That. Uh, clearance. So what we're going to do is come over here to Mike. Please caution for simultaneous to start operation. Listening. Close separate parallel runways. All departures advise ground control. Everyone up is complete and remain on ground control frequency until advised. VFR departures advise ground control direction of flight. So I'm going to start filling Notice this out. Airman. Runway 3 Now we're going to type. Advise on this contact you have Romeo. We've got information Romeo. Centennial Airport Information Romeo 1553 Zulu 1310 Niner Visibility 10 Two clouds 8000 Two clouds 13000 Two zero thousand scattered Temperature 6 Dew point minus 1 1 All center 3014 Visual approach in use Landing and departing runway 35 right Runway 35 left Runway 1028 open and available Hazardous weather for the Colorado Air available from flight service Low level wind shear advisories are in effect Use caution for simultaneous operations, close separated parallel runways. All departures advise ground control. If everyone up is complete and remain on ground control frequency until advised. VFR departures advise ground control direction of flight. Notice to airmen. Runway 35 right, rail out of service. Advise on this contact, you have Romeo. We got Romeo. So now I'm going to come up here and switch to our clearance delivery frequency. I'm just going to preload ground. We're going to be in a good spot and uh, do call up uh, clearance for our uh, uh, clearance here to Scottsdale. Clearance, good morning. Uh, Vision Jet 246 Yankee with uh, Romeo Instruments to Scottsdale. Vision 246 Yankee Centennial, clearance clear to the Scottsdale Airport via the Wings 1 departure, Teru transition as filed. Maintain 8,000, Denver departure frequency 132.75. Squawk 0610. Clear to Scottsdale via the wings uh, one departure. Taylor transition is filed. Maintain 8,000. Departures 132.75. Squawk 0610 for Vision Jet 246 Yankee. Vision Jet 246 Yankee, we back, correct. Okay. One of the things that I do here is I work backwards in my clearance. So to make sure I hit everything I've done uh, correctly, transponder code is 0610. I'm going to come over here and type that in, 0610, and enter. That's programmed. Our departure frequency is uh, 13275, which that is programmed in right there. I'm going to set 8,000 as my initial altitude, and that is going to be set right here. Three, two, three, 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 and then the Wings 1 Teru transition. We've already programmed that, but going to make sure that looks like... Uh, uh, looks exactly like that. So we can verify the whole thing off of 3 5 right, wings 1, Teru, and then the rest of it's filed all the way down to Montrose, and then it, uh, the arrival into the Desert 2 arrival. So, kind of uh, to piggyback on our planning on the front end, 
we knew there was a good chance that that's the, that's the route we would get because it was loaded in the recommended settings. So, um, sure enough, when we call clearance, that's the route he gives us. So rather than having to to write down a complicated departure procedure or clearance, it was nice to plan that ahead on the front end and save us some work. So. Absolutely. I love that. That is such a, I call that clearance delivery bloodshed on the radio. If yeah. you're up there and you're like, oh my gosh, I filed it incorrectly, but ForeFlight makes it super easy and do that. So we've got that. So we're in a good spot here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep going with the checklist. So comms, those are set. we got our clearance. Altimeter is uh, uh, 3014, which I'm going to dial up here. 3014 set, the field elevation checks. And uh, transponder, that was set. Heading and altitude, 8,000 is set. Tower will probably assign this off of 35 right, which would be great. I'm going to just kind of pre-bug that heading. Flight controls free and correct, left and right. Our trim is uh, set for takeoff. It's it's uh, a trim here. We have a hat switch, but this in the Vision Jet becomes very useful. The trim wheel, very nice fine-tuned adjustments, and we have roll trim as well. So that's that's all set. Flaps, 50%. Those are set there already for our pre-flight. So that sets here. That aligns up there, and so you're looking out there visually, it looks like they're all set, which is great. Electronic roll trim is set. The toga button is right under the throttle, just if you're coming from an SR. I'm going to hit that, and we're going to look up here. So one, two, three, boom. We've got our command bars that's set. Our cast messages, those are normal for right now. Those are checked. Uh, parking brake is released, and then brakes are going to be checked from there. So nice thing about this is that idle power, the plane doesn't really move. So I don't have the parking brake on or my feet on the brakes right now, so that's nice, and we're not, we're not rolling. Awesome. So I'm just going to do our takeoff briefing here. Um, it's been a little bit. 8,000. The first fix is going to be uh, runway heading or bumps. So what I'm going to do real quick is just brief this. This is my takeoff briefing, and it's really nice. So we're going to depart off of runway 35 right. We need 4,065 feet available. We've got 10,000 feet uh, uh, on board or available to us. We're going to rotate at 90 knots, positive rate, gear up, flight director. Uh, we're going to pitch right into it. We're going to climb at 115, pass it through that, flaps up. We're going to accelerate to a VY speed of 160. And then our initial altitude is going to be 8,000, then to the bumps intersection. And if uh, we have any issues uh, or detect any vibration sounds or the engine fails, we're going to abort the takeoff immediately. Uh, our CAPS deployment strategy is uh, we're at 5,800 feet right now. Um, we've got uh, 5,800 plus 600 is 6,400. So if 5,800 to 6,400 feet, we're going to land straight ahead and uh, use caps as necessary. Above 6,400 feet, all the way up through uh, 7,800 feet, we'll pull immediately. Above 7,800 feet, we'll triage and troubleshoot, but coming back down through 7,800, we'll pull. And any um, threats or special conditions for this flight? I'm the threat. I'm not very current in the jet right <laughs> now. Joel is being so patient and getting us going again, so props off to Joel. And uh, it's going to be a beautiful day. So one thing I'll add with regards to the, the CAPS decision altitude, we can, we can, there's two places we can put this. We can look, there's our radar altimeter. So as long as that says 600 feet, we could pull CAPS. Um, if you, rather than doing the um, conversion to MSL versus AGL, sometimes I like to bug it right here in my minimum section so I could put... What did we say, 6,400? Yeah, 6,400 feet. So, 6,400. And then it just happens to show up in my minimums right here. So that's one little hack on um, what to remember your CAPS decision altitude is. That's fantastic. Great. Um, last thing I'm just going to do, I've done this, this flight a lot, and we sort of briefed it on the ground, but just for our video here. I'm going to show this. This is uh, managing our panes uh, windows here. But what I'm going to do is just pull up the chart and uh, down here for our departure, for the Wings 1 departure, and just make sure there's nothing abnormal. So uh, if we're departing off a of Centennial, what we're going to do is climb off a of 3.5 right. I can zoom in just to make that a little bit better. Uh, climb off a of 3.5 right, heading 3.50 to 6800, and then heading 3.50, or signed by ATC. They told us to maintain uh, 8,000, so we've overridden 
the the flight level 230, and uh, there's bumps, there's some crossing restrictions in terms of getting to these altitudes, so we'll see what air traffic control does, but we're going to level off at 8,000 feet. G2 Plus today, we're going to get great performance, and it's uh, nice and cool hey, out. If you'll zoom out, I think there was one little red flag we need to look at. Okay. Up in the top corner here. What does that say? All right, so that says accelerate to 250 knots or greater upon reaching 10,000. If slower speeds meet crossing restrictions, advise ATC uh, prior to taxi. So we'll see. Uh, we'll advise the air traffic control okay. of that and when we're ready to go, um, which is good. All right. All right. Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to go ahead and load up ground. Let's plug that in. APA. We'll call them ready to taxi from the Denver jet. How you feeling, Joel? Feeling good. Okay, here we go. Comp 2 is up. Got that. And I'm going to come over here and just turn our map back on so we can see. Okay. Ground, uh, ground division jet uh, 246 Yankee at uh, Denver Jet with Romeo ready to taxi IFR. Division jet 246 Yankee, Centennial Ground, runway 35 right, taxi the Alpha. 35 right via Alpha, uh, uh, 46 Yankee, thank you. Okay, good. We're clear left, clear right, and we're ready to go. Good. So, Al, I'll let you focus on flying the airplane, but I'm just going to make some, some call-outs. You know, this is a true demonstration of what the G2 Plus can, can do. And if you notice here with our blue Scion, that's our available takeoff thrust. So we're really going to have 100% capacity of what the FJ-33 can give us today. So um, we'll I'm kind excited of, to see that. Yeah. So we determined that our, our ground roll was going to be about 2,400 feet. Yes. Just using the runway signage, I'm going to kind of uh, see how close we get to that, or if we beat it. So Great. Fantastic. Since this is my first time back into the Vision Jet after a couple months, I'm going to go on autopilot right away, um, just, to, just to start feeling it out and get used to it. And uh, with the extra thrust, I haven't been on in a G2 Plus yet. Uh, so not used to the extra climb that we're going to be experiencing. We got a quick level off at 8,000 feet. So that'll be, uh, that'll be great. Any, any thoughts around that? Is that all right with you? No, that's great. What I'd recommend, um, you know, is, is let's uh, we can use a sort of max rate of climb so we're clear of all obstacles. For that initial assigned altitude. So rather than using the the, the pre-programmed 165 climb speed, yep. what I'd recommend in high density altitude Bravo airports Bravo, 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 is uh, we'll go to manual on the auto throttle. Number six four Yankee monitor tower. Thanks uh, six four Yankee. And rather than climbing out at 165, maybe we'll climb out at 130 and just get the max rate of climb. Good. Clear all obstacles. 165 works great um, in most parts of the country, but when you're dealing with high density altitude and mountains, you want to uh, try to get up as soon as possible. Fantastic. So we'll do that. We're over monitoring tower now. We've got uh, COM1 radio up. We're listening. We're going to be called for takeoff. It's going to be great. I love these hangars over here. They have some of the coolest hangars here at Denver Centennial. Uh, but I'm going to just uh, look up there. One last cl glance and check, see where the whole short line is. That way I've got an idea before making the turn, which is great. Now I'm just going to zoom this out for my flight. Uh, maybe right there. That'll be good. That's where I'll like it. Have our flight plan up over here, and I feel really good. I like flying with my checklist here, that way it's nice and set, um, and uh, just kind of roll into that, or it's front and center as we need it. We're going downhill just a tad here, so I'm going to take a little power out. And they'll call us ready for takeoff. We've learned that lesson here plenty of times. 
So there's there's four items, we call them the Fab Four, four items before we take the runway. And that's to make sure all our probe heats are on, all of our lights are on, and our flaps are set, our trim set. So that's kind of one last little self-check, make sure we hit all the four items. Vision 264, Yankee Sierra, Sen correction, Yankee, Centennial Tower. Fly, runway heading, runway 35 right, cover takeoff, wind 300 at 6, no delay, traffic, citation, 4 mile final. Runway heading 35 right, clear for takeoff, Vision Jet uh, 246, Yankee, thank you. That's right, 38. Uh, lights, probes, flaps, so that. trim. Yeah, that flaps, that trim, that's all set, toga's good. Coming onto the runway, clear left, see the citation out there. Really, really nice, beautiful day. Line ourselves up here. All right, Joel, you feeling good? All right, let's do it. All right, here we go. All right, lined up, three, five, right. Here we go. Nice thing is, I could just jam the thrust lever all the way forward like that. Yes. First Feel G that extra. First G two plus takeoff on the okay. roll. You can definitely feel the wow. difference. Look at that. Look at our fuel flow too. Awesome. There's sixty knots. All right, so here is two thousand feet. And we're right at rotation speed, so there we go. That, the numbers are pretty spot on. That was about 2,020 feet. All right, positive rate. It's coming up. Fantastic. Fast track 38, traffic. Citation, mile and a half final parallel, runway 6,400. Come on, the autopilot. Fast track 38. Fast track 38, once beam the citation, base approved. Running 3-5 right, left, so we're touching go, and 3 3 0 5. Up. Base approved, the citation. Uh, and then let's, three, five, let's flight level That's change it to 130 knots. Division 6 4 Yankee, turn left. Heading 3 2 0, contact over departure. 3 2 0, over departure. Uh, 6 4 uh, Yankee, thanks. 3 2 0. 4 6 Yankee. That nice climb rate coming all the way up. Partial Ho, Vision Jet uh, 246 Yankee, uh, 7.5, leveling 8000, heading 320. Our 264 Yankee, Denver departure at our contact. <laughs> Zero Papa Tango, Centennial is 1 o'clock, 1 1 mile. Zero Papa Tango, uh, clear visual approach, runway 35. Crack Control gave us direct to Baylor, we're climbing to 11,000 feet, hit direct 2. Arm that. Activate. Batik 7782, climb and maintain. Climb Start 230. 230, Batik 7782. 11,000 feet, that looks great. South 3193, contact Denver Center. All right, thanks a lot, Joel. That was awesome. You we're a huge help on that, getting current again. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot more fun. I got to get two more landings in order to be fully legally current, but I feel really good. Good, nice help. Joel was uh, was fantastic. He was also running a great camera, and uh, he had a little pro tip. Guess where we're going to lunch? Right up in that building is a great restaurant. Joel has uh, is going to walk us through the menu, and it's time to go eat. So, anyway, thank thanks for flying along with us on this really cool looking uh, Vision Jet here, all murdered out. It's fantastic, and we'll see you soon.